Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that I've chosen to share with you this morning is taken from the gospel reading that Pastor Welmer just read for you. I share with you today at verse 41. The parents of Jesus went to Jerusalem every year to celebrate the feast of the Passover. This is the word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. Well, today, I want to talk to you about the Christian family. You know, raising a Christian family today is very challenging. It's not easy to be a strong Christian family today, is it? Let me explain. For example, your attitude about germs changes. With your first child, when the pacifier falls to the floor... You pick it up, put it away, until you can get home and wash it and boil it. With the second child, when the pacifier falls to the floor, you pick it up, squirt some of the baby's juice from the bottle on it, and put it back in the baby's mouth. With the third child, when the pacifier falls on the floor, you pick it off, rub it on your shirt a little bit, and stick it back in the baby's mouth, right? Here's another example. Your attitude toward going out changes. With your first child, when you go out, you call the babysitter five times. With your second child, when you go out, you leave with the sitter your phone number and have her call you if she needs you. With the third child, when you go out, you tell the sitter to only call you if she sees blood. <laughs> right? Here's another example. Your attitude towards swallowing coins changes. With your first child, when they swallow a coin, you immediately take them to the doctor and get an x-ray. With your second child, when they swallow a coin, you wait carefully until the coin passes. And with your third child, when they swallow a coin, you deduct it from their allowance. <laughs> right? Families are wonderful, but families are challenging, aren't they? The family of Jesus was a challenging family. Jesus was raised in a very, very strict Jewish home. The parents of Jesus, every year, took their family to the city of Jerusalem where they would celebrate the feast of the Passover. You know, the Passover where the people remembered how God had protected the Jewish people years before. Well, the parents of Jesus had a great trust in God. And they made sure that their family knew about God. They made sure that their family worshipped God regularly in the temple. Both Mary and Joseph were active in raising their children. As the head of the household, Joseph made sure that the children came to learn about God. And as mother, as a very loving and caring mother, Mary made sure that her children knew about love and about respect for others. One time, when Jesus was 12 years old, something very interesting happened as they were going for their annual visit to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. After they finished their celebration in the, of the Passover, Mary and Joseph headed home. They had walked about a whole day, and it was getting dark, and so they looked around to see where Jesus was, but they couldn't find him. Now, that wasn't so unusual because they always traveled in a big crowd, and most of the time, Jesus would be playing with the other boys, and he'd just be somewhere in the, in the group. But they looked and looked, and Jesus wasn't there. And so they had to go all the way back to Jerusalem. And they went back to Jerusalem and started looking. Well, finally, they found Jesus in the temple. And they went up to him, and as you can imagine, Mary is upset. She's really upset, and she goes up and says, Jesus, didn't you know we've been worrying about you? Didn't you know that we've been looking all over for you? And Jesus calmly said, didn't you know that I needed to be in the temple 
talking about God? Well, the Bible tells us Mary and Joseph didn't understand at all what Jesus was saying. But Jesus went back home with them and was obedient to them. And then the Bible says Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and with others. Now there are some things about the family of Jesus here that I think that you can identify with in your own life. First of all, everything in the family of Jesus was not perfect. The family of Jesus had their disagreements. They had their disagreements. We know that at one time, when Jesus was about 30 years old and starting his public ministry, his brothers, they couldn't understand what he was teaching about. And they said, he's out of his mind. They didn't always agree with Jesus. And it's also very natural for there to be disagreements as children grow older and leave home. Children don't always do what their parents dreamed for their child to do. Sometimes children go their own way like Jesus did here. Families do have their disagreements. It's natural for this to happen. But then, secondly, the family of Jesus was always there for each other. I mean, Jesus was always going to be Mary and Joseph's child. And Jesus was always going to have a close relationship with them, and they would love one another. You know, sometimes children don't understand when their parents say, we only want what is best for you. Parents do want what is best for their children. Oh, parents will make mistakes because they're not perfect, but they do always want what is best for their children. We see this with Jesus and his parents today, don't we? After their disagreement, Jesus went back home with them, and he was obedient to them. Jesus knew his parents were always there for him. Parents, it is important that you see things once in a while from your child's point of view. Once in a while, just get down on the floor and play with your children. It's a great opportunity for you to teach your child how to play nicely and how to share and how to put their toys away. It's a great way to show your children that you're always there for them. And that leads me into the third thing to say today. Parents are sensitive to their children's needs. Mothers, they are very sensitive to the sound of the crying of their child, aren't they? And fathers, fathers listen when their child talks about their fears or their worries in life. Did you know that there are 940 Saturdays from the time a child is born until that child reaches 18 years old? It's true. Be sure you use those Saturdays wisely. In James Patterson's novel, Suzanne's Diary for Nicholas, the main character in the novel is a woman named Suzanne. Suzanne's a very, very busy mother. She's also a busy doctor. Well, before she died from a heart condition, Suzanne wrote in a, her diary a note to her son, Nicholas. And this is what she wrote. Imagine that life is a game in which you are juggling five balls. The five balls that you're juggling are called work, family, health, friends, and integrity, honesty. She wrote, imagine you're juggling these five balls. Pretty soon you find out that the ball that's labeled work is a rubber ball. If you drop it on the floor, it'll bounce back. But the other four balls, family, health, friends, and integrity, you find out that those balls are made of glass. 
and if you drop those balls to the floor, they will just shatter. When you learn the lesson of the five balls, that's when you'll find balance in your life. I know that you're all busy parents. We live in a fast-paced world. It's a hectic world we live in, isn't it? So don't forget how fragile your family can be. There was a Sunday school class for parents of preschool-age children. And they were trying to think of a name for their Sunday school class. They came up with names like seekers and searchers and learners. And as they talked back and forth about it, finally they came up with the name for their class. They named their Sunday school class Tired Parents Class. Yep, those parents were tired. But you know what? They were committed. They were committed to be sure their children knew that Jesus was their Savior and Lord. They were committed to be sure their children knew that Jesus was willing to forgive every one of their sins. Anything their child ever did wrong, they wanted them to know that God was willing to forgive it. Anything. They wanted them to know. They were committed to be sure that the children knew no matter what happened, they were going to be in heaven. They were going to be with Jesus in heaven. They wanted to be sure they had that comfort and that hope and certainty in their lives. Being a Christian parent is not easy. It wasn't easy for Mary and Joseph, and they had the most perfect baby this world has ever known. It isn't going to be easy for you either. But being a Christian parent for your children is the most important thing you will ever do in your life. Raising a family, it's a glass ball. If you drop it, it will shatter. So take care of your family. Love them. Always be there for one another. Talk to them. Play with them. And someday, you'll thank God for the gift of your family. Someday you'll thank God for the gift of your special children. God bless you. Amen. Let's now stand as we sing together the next song of praise.